Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the hardest SAT math questions. My name's Brooke, I've been coaching the SAT for over two decades. I've written two books for the ACT math section if you're taking that test as well. And we have an online course for the SAT with four real tests and lots of super hard math questions. We've had students score 1600 using our course, you should check it out. So in this video, I'm gonna go over what I call like a couple 780, 790 kind of level questions and talk about what you can think about problem solving, tips and skills, and what to do when you're totally stuck. So this first question is actually based on a question from test eight, hard module number 19. Which of the following expressions has a factor of x plus 3b where b is a positive integer constant? So how in the world are we supposed to factor something when it's not integers, you guys? That seems really kind of hard, doesn't it? So let's think about how we can do this. Well, one thing we can do is we can set up sort of what our factor pair would be and then start to play a game I like to call matchy-matchy and think about it. The other thing that I wanna tell you guys is whenever you see this word integer, or even better yet, positive integer, that is magical because this severely limits the number of values that are possible. And that word integer, when you see that word integer, could come into play as you do the problem. So keep that in mind. That word positive integer means at some point in this problem, we may get to guess and check. And that's why this problem is so hard. So first, let's kind of set things up. So we know x plus 3b would be a factor. So if that's a factor, we then have to multiply it by some other thing to get all this stuff. So if that's true, I know my first term would have to be 3x because looking at this, I would go 3x times x, I would get this, right? Looking at my last term now, here's what's clutch, you guys, all these last terms are the same. Awesome, that means I can actually figure out what should go here. It should be whatever this is times this. So my second tip for you is when you have a factoring kind of problem, one tip that I want you to think about is that the first and the last terms are the simplest when factoring, okay? So always start with those if you are trying to decode some complicated factoring problem. So as you can see, I can actually figure out that this has to be seven. Okay, boom, now you guys, I'm in business. So you're still gonna say like, uh, Brooke, but the problem is there's gonna be Bs in that center term. I'm like, yeah, there's gonna be Bs in that center term, but we can solve this out and we're gonna play a game I like to call matchy-matchy, so let's do this. So this is gonna be three X squared, right? And then we have plus seven X, right? And then we have the outer terms, which is plus 3b times 3x, which is 9bx. And then we have plus 21b, right? Because this gave me the secret answer for what number goes there. Now I can simplify this down. My 7x and my 9bx is the hardest to kind of deal with. But all that I have to do is just factor out the 9b here. So I get 7 plus 9b times x and then we get 3x squared plus this, and then we get plus 21b. And at this point, a lot of my students get stuck, and they're like, uh, I don't know, because those don't look like this, and this has to be in, and I don't know what the answer is, uh, right? And this is where we play the game. I love to call matchy-matchy. So how do we play matchy-matchy? I'm gonna match this up with this and see what could be true. And this is where this positive integer constant comes in really handy. Let's think about what this means. This means that nine times some integer plus seven has to equal one of those numbers. So what's gonna happen is this equals one of these numbers, either seven, 21, 28, or 52. What does this number have to be? It has to be a multiple of nine plus seven. I'm doing this in my head and I can kind of really quickly see like, oh, a multiple of nine plus seven, 52 is 45 plus seven, right? And that's gonna be my answer. So if you get this, what I've said so far, you can just put D and move on. But I'm gonna do this a little bit more in an easier to understand way, which is I'm gonna create four equations and you guys are gonna see how this works. So first I'm gonna do nine times an integer and I just write the INT plus seven equals seven. I'm gonna do nine times an integer plus seven equals 21. And then I'm gonna do the math on this. I'm gonna subtract the seven and I get zero. So we go nine times an integer equals zero. But here's the problem. This integer has to be a positive integer. If it's nine times an integer is zero, the integer has to equal zero. So that doesn't work, does it? No. So here, nine times an integer plus seven equals 21. That would mean that 14 equals nine times an integer, which just is not true, right? Again, I can do the next one, nine times an integer 
plus 7 equals 28, and then I get 21 equals 9 times an integer, and that's just not true either. 21 is not divisible by 9, but 52, we're going to have a winner. 9 times an integer plus 7 equals 52. 45 equals 9 times an integer. That's true. It's 9 times 5, right? And so then we figure out that b would equal 5 and that it's a possibility and that's our answer choice. Okay, cool. So again, the secret tricks to this problem, number one, when you have something that's talking about factors and you're like, oh, how do I factor that? Well, just set up your factors and see where you land, right? Two, remember my little trick called matchy-matchy where you match up the individual parts when you're foiling out a product. You know, this piece, the first terms have to be the first two terms. The last terms have to be the last two terms and the center term has to be the sum of those other two products, right? Match all that stuff up and then match it up between your equations and play that matchy matchy game. And my third tip is that word positive integer is super limiting. When you have that, you can basically guess and check or you can think about the theory of what does that mean and then plug things in and back solve and kind of move forwards and backwards and you can find the answer. Cool, awesome, we're gonna move on. So here we have like a wicked quadratic question with too many variables. Ah! We have this f of x equals ax squared plus 4x plus c, and in the given quadratic, a and z are constants, and the graph of y equals f of x in the xy plane is a parabola that opens upward. Okay, so that's a good hint. We know a is greater than zero from that fact, so whenever we get a fact, I write it down. It has a vertex at the point h comma k, so that's fine, so I have h comma k, and they're gonna tell us something where h and k are constants. It also says k is less than zero. So k is less than zero, and this opens upwards, so this is gonna be something like this, right? k is less than zero, meaning the y value of the vertex. Okay, and then f of negative nine equals f of three. So what that means is f of negative nine equals f of three, right? Something like this. And I don't know where that is, but I know that these two are equal. Okay, so here's a quick tip for you guys. Whenever we have two points that are like horizontal and the same x input gives you the same y input, we can essentially draw a horizontal line between those two function inputs if they're equal to each other. And I know that the average of those two x values has to be the x value of the vertex because of the symmetry of parabolas, right? I know if these two have the same y height, the center point of that line is gonna go through the vertex. So what I can do to find the x value of the vertex is I just take negative nine plus three and I divide it by two. So that's negative six over two or negative three. So I know that the x value of the vertex here is negative three, okay? And then I know, I guess I could write it as k because I know the vertex is h comma k. So the first thing that I know is I know that h equals negative three, right? I already figured that out. The other thing is once I start to decode the vertex, I might be able to figure out some other things. Another thing that I could do really quickly is when I know the x value of the vertex and I have something in standard form, I'm gonna go to what I call my quadratics toolkit. And I go through all my quadratics toolkit in the various kind of videos and lessons and stuff that I do with our online course and with our classes. So quadratics toolkit, the first thing that I used is if f of a equals f of b, then a plus b over two is the x value of the vertex, right? So that's the first thing that I did. I also know if a is positive, then it's an upwards facing parabola, right? That's another fun fact from my quadratics toolkit. These are basically all the fun facts of quadratics I need to know. Another is opposite of b over 2a equals the x value of the vertex. Because I already have the x value of the vertex, I might plug that in just to see if it gives me any more intel, okay? So I'm gonna look at this now, and I know opposite of b, which here is four over 2a, which is literally a, so I get opposite of b over 2a, and I know what that equals. That's gonna equal my negative three, my x value of the vertex that I already found. So cool, this is gonna let me solve for a, and a is one of the things I need to know about. I haven't even finished reading the problem, but I'm just gonna keep going here. And I get three times, negative three times 2a equals negative four, and then I'm gonna divide, and this I'm gonna make into a six, and pull it over here and make it negative six over here, and then leave the a there. 
and I get negative 4 over negative 6 or 2 thirds equals A. Cool. So I got my A value. 2 thirds equals A. Is that greater than 1? Nada. It is not. So I know which of the following must be true. 2 is not true. And so I know those two are out and I'm down to 2, right? I've already gotten it to a 50-50. Okay, now comes the harder part because that was the easier part getting to that A. And I got that just off my quadratics toolkit. These three tips. Boom. I was able to apply those three things and I got to where I am. To move a little bit farther, I may need to start creating other equations. So let's basically take the fact that we know the h is negative 3. And the next tool in the toolkit I'm going to try is using vertex form. So we have it in standard form. Another piece of my quadratics toolkit is what I call vertex form, which is called y equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k is called vertex form. And the way that I'm going to use this vertex form, it's kind of like the last problem. I'm going to play matchy-matchy. I'm going to take this, and then I'm going to create a vertex form with the vertex piece that I know. And then we're going to sort of expand it out and play matchy-matchy, OK? So I'm going to go y equals, and now I know my a, which is 2 thirds times, is that right? Yeah, it's 2 thirds times x minus h. And what did we say h was? I said h was negative 3. So x minus h is x minus minus 3, or x plus 3 quantity squared, plus k. And then I also know something about k. Remember, k is less than 0. We haven't used this fun fact yet. I'm sure we're going to use it at some point. But first, let's expand this out. We're going to play matchy-matchy, and then we're going to try to solve maybe for that c a little bit. So here, I'm going to expand this x plus 3 quantity squared. I'm going to use my special products, which means it's just x squared plus 2 times a times b, if you remember. Right, we do 2 times that times that, which is 6x, and then plus 9 plus k, OK? And then I'm going to just distribute here 2 thirds x squared plus 2 thirds times 6 is 12 divided by 3, which is 4x, plus 2 thirds of 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3 times 2 is 6, plus k, OK? And so this is what I've got. And now here's what we're looking at. They want to know, is c necessarily less than 0? So what we want to know is 6 plus k is c, right? When I match this up, matchy, matchy, that last term is just the constant piece here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down this k is less than 0. And I'm going to plug in from this equation into the k is less than 0 and see if we can get an inequality and compare it to that inequality, OK? I'm going to plug in for k. So I have to get k equals c minus 6. You guys see that? Now I'm just going to plug in c minus 6 is less than 0, and I get c is less than 6. OK, so this is what I know. I know c is less than 6, but this says c is less than 0. Those are not the same. I have to go out on a limb here because maybe there is something that I don't understand. But I know c is less than 0 is not equal to c is less than 6. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say neither 1 or 2 because I think c could be equal to 5 according to this. The other thing you could do is if you have extra time at the end, you could plug in something like c is equal to 5 and just double check that all this stuff is true and fill in your a that you know. You get what I'm saying. Or you can pick a random k that is true in these parameters, and you can kind of plug it into Desmos to be extra short. But based on the fact that I can do all this math and I get down to a c is less than 6 and not a c is less than 0, I can say it's probably not right, and I'm going to put d. And again, if you've got extra time at the end, you can kind of troll around in Desmos and make up numbers and see where you land. But there you go. So the third thing that I used was vertex form. And then finally, I'm using given information and then substitution, right? Which isn't part of my quadratics toolkit. But certainly in these super hard questions, one of the most important things is look at what you're given, right? And that last question we did, it was that positive integer information. In this question, it says k is less than 0. That becomes hypercritical. So two tips for this one. One, know your quadratics toolbox. And two, use that information that's in there. Manipulate things as you can. And hopefully you can get down to the answers. I hope you guys like this video. So please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. If you need support in this process, we've got your back, not only with our YouTube channel. Put in the comments what you want help with. You can even tell us exact questions you want me to solve. If it's an official question, I can make an explainer video of it. Tell me what you guys want. I'd love to help you improve your SAT score. And check out our online course. We've got a free practice SAT if you need more practice and you've blown through all the blue books. I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Go crush your SAT. Let us know how you do.